Season 2, Episode 1. Welcome to the Muslim Life Hackers Podcast, the weekly podcast providing you with the knowledge, tools, and connections to help you get ahead in life. And now for your hosts, Mifra Maruf and Maheen Malik. Assalamu alaikum, it's Maheen Malik here and I'm going to be your host for today's episode. This is episode one of season two, a new season. What can I say? It feels good. A fresh start. I hope you had a great holiday and end of year 2014 and I hope you're looking forward to a fantastic 2015 inshallah. You can get access to all of season one, that is all 50 episodes including all of our previous interviews as well by our awesome guests um, by going to muslimlifehackers.com forward slash season one to get access to all of them. And if you're listening to us on our app and are thinking, you know, hey, where's season one? I can't see it. Ah, well, don't worry. It's all there. Just head over to muslimlifehackers.com forward slash season one to find out how to listen to them. Today's episode is a special one. We have an awesome guest on the show for an interview, none other than Mr. Abu Productive himself, Muhammad Faris. If you're familiar with ProductiveMuslim.com, you'll know that Muhammad Faris is the founder and CEO of the fantastic community over there at ProductiveMuslim.com, where they tackle big issues on all things productive. In the interview, I'm going to be talking to Muhammad about the backstory behind Productive Muslim and how it all got started. Um, We'll be touching base on the challenges that he faced along the way um, back then and the challenges that he faces now in the day-to-day when it comes to managing his brand and Productive Muslim. He also gives advice to others who are also thinking about maybe taking on projects of their own. So it's going to be a good one. New Year's resolution not working for you? If so, check out Visionaire Online. Visionaire is an online course combining goal setting with the power of dua to help you take your life to the next level. Both Mifra and I have taken this course ourselves and we love it. It has totally changed the way that we set goals and go about achieving them. We're sure that you'll love it too. You can find out more about Visionaire by going to muslimlifehackers.com forward slash visionaire. That's V-I-S-I-O-N-A-I-R-E. Visionaire. Asalaamu Alaikum Muslim Life Hackers. Today we've got a very special guest interview for you all. None other than the founder and CEO of Productive Muslim, Brother Muhammad Faris. Asalaamu Alaikum Brother Muhammad and welcome to the show. Wa Alaikum Asalaam wa Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. Um, So today, Brother Muhammad, what I really want to kind of grill you on is the backstory behind Productive Muslims so that our listeners can get a bit of a bit of a bit of an understanding of how it all started and maybe be inspired to pursue their own projects. So could you take us back in time and set the scene for us? Where did Productive Muslim all start? Okay, so started Productive Muslim in uh, November 2007. Um, at that time, I was doing my master's. I was also um, sort of involved with the Islam Society, the sort of MSA at, at my university in, in the UK. And I was involved with a couple of community projects. And uh, I felt very, very busy. And that kind of annoyed me because I realized I'm not that of a busy person. I'm all these sort of top CEOs and top you know, super busy people, how do they manage? How come I'm just a rinky-dinky student here and struggling with balancing between, you know, some of the roles I had? So I started learning about the science of productivity, started learning some life skills that, and I applied to my life, realized, wow, this actually works. This actually has an impact on what I can do, what I can get done during the day. And I got really excited. Um, but I never thought of starting a blog about it. It was just something that sort of um, I this stumbled upon from my own life and realized that this is something really cool that will help me for the rest of my life. And then my friends started asking me a lot of questions. How do you do it? How do you balance it? How do you, are you involved in so many things, but you seem on top of it all? How does, how do you do that? And I was like, no, it's just here you do this. You give some, give some tips and advice here and there. And then it hit me one day, I was um, walking to, to Fajr and it just the two words, productive Muslim popped in my head. I remember getting really, really, really excited about it and running back from Fajr Prayer and just, you know, just booking the domain name, not knowing what I'm going to do with it, just booking <laughs> the domain name 
and just starting to got into like I don't think was it blogger.com or square.com at that time and I started just writing my articles about how to be better person at that time the vision was how I mean, it's basically taking this the science of what was available in those days in 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 with, whether getting things done David Allen's books or seven habits or life hack or whatever that I came across and just trying to share that with the muslim world um that was the first phase and i remember sort of roping in my flatmate until hey you should you know just work on this and he got excited and um after 2 months we just it fell flat we just we couldn't be bothered we we after 2 months we gave up on it because no one cares not really that of a big deal let's forget about it and let's shut it down and we actually shut the website down um oh, wow. we realized you just thought it's it's not worth it i got even busier with my masters and my work i thought this is not really worth it now but then it's finally a few months later in in june 2008 um that's when i was kind of finished my bulk of my masters and i was getting bored again and I had one email from the actually the brother of my flatmate who <laughs> younger brother around 10 year old guy he said hey how come you guys took down your blog it was really interesting you should guys should restart it again and that was almost like a little message uh like my one true fan you know <laughs> but i got excited about he's alive it. he's alive maybe maybe i should do something about it and at the same time something else happened when i realized when i read the hadith prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says bukali ummah fi bukuriha at the early hours of blessed my nation and then it just hit me like a brick wall here i am trying to teach the muslim world uh product techniques from the sort of the you know current you know sort of western world but there's so much you know deen that's already calling for productivity mm. what if i change the vision of the website from what how can i teach muslim to be productive to how can islam help you become productive and that's when the real sort of that's when the real um that's when the true launch happened of the website that's and i really then it it became something that's it became like a dream and became something bigger than than just a blog that i just teach people how to become productive it became a how does islam make productive how can this religion help you become productive and just to overcome and overthrow the notion that you know that practicing islam will you know will put you down or practicing islam will make you more lazy or it's about just praying and fasting but it's actually how it really is a whole system to develop and grow Wow, subhanallah. So it sounds like it really was quite a progression. For example, um you, you were doing your you were involved in community projects, MSA, and then you kind of felt like this like you felt really really busy and then like you got the idea for productive Muslim while walking to Fajr and then um you know, you got your flatmate flatmate involved and then it it sounds like you it was also a bit of boredom plus uh, inspiration and your one true fan so th- there's a lot of things like inspiring you and propelling you and then of course the islamic perspective was there like one really main thing inspired you to keep going through like the ups and downs of productive muslim i think it was mainly um when i when i started or when i got involved in university especially working with the with the muslim students association you know, in the uk they call them the isoc some societies when i got involved in that i really found myself in that sort of community that that area where i'm just serving and helping muslims and i made a little promise myself no matter where i am no matter where i go i always be in a position to serve muslim communities and the muslim ummah so this was sort of um practicing was an outlet for me and it was one of the outlets that i found as able to serve the ummah through and i never realized it become it would come it would come quite big i just thought it would, you know this is just for me a way to serve the ummah this how i want to serve the ummah and it's been a, it's been a blessing it's really so i think i benefited more and become it's been a blessing for me more than i could ever give back to it uh, but it's it really has outgrown uh, the initial the initial dream oh fantastic mashallah um so it, it was more about you being in a position to serve the ummah along the journey of productive so was there any big mentors that you had along the way who who were you looking for for guidance and inspiration i think one thing that i kept very clear in my mind is i want this to become a really professional platform i didn't want it to be a typical and sort of excuse the the language excuse this term that quote unquote islamic website before this this is 5 years ago when islamic websites were really boring and mm. they just had this long long articles and other interesting so that time i just wanted to i wanted the blog to really have become something that people would love to come to and would love to enjoy to come through so i had i was looking for you know talented people who would help me sort of 
put together articles, you know, designs, videos that would really attract people, really make it, make it interesting for them. So in a way, I was kind of, I didn't have in the Muslim world a lot of um, sort of maybe other blogs at that time to, or other websites to look up to. But I did, from the non-Muslim world, I did look up to quite a lot of sort of the major um, productivity websites at the time and the major sort of established, you know, established well-established blogs. Like how can I? How can we become professional? Not just be like them, but also beat them. Be something that's a real, a real, you know, innovative, innovative in this area. Mm-hmm. So that's number one. But second, of course, from a personal perspective, I always had you know mentors who 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 I can tap into. I almost I, I call them my board of advisory council. They they just um, they're <laughs> different people for different situations depending what situation I'm going through, whether I'm going through a situation with the media, whether I'm going through a situation with managing my team, whether it's going through a situation, you know, in terms of just just balancing it all. They always have a few people that I tap into that can sort of give me uh, some good ideas to how to move forward. Mm, that's really interesting. So you've got your board of advisors for like different um, areas that you want to kind of tackle. And then you've also looked for inspiration from the non-Muslim world when you couldn't find it in, say, the literature available in our Muslim blogs and stuff like that. So, um, so when Productive Muslim started back in the year 2007, um, with every progression in life or with every project, we also face challenges along the way. Could you tell us a bit more about um, maybe some of the big challenges that you faced with Productive Muslim and how did you conquer that? The major challenges, um, number one, is um, finding the right people. Mm. I think that's a huge challenge, finding the right talented people and um, and and having these people sort of believe in the vision and come with you on the journey. Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed that, you know, the team, the pregnancy team is an amazing team and really they're the ones who are putting all the effort and putting work in. I'm just a figurehead at the moment <laughs> and really they're very, very inspiring. The way they work, the way they, they give back to the, to the Ummah, the way they serve them through the website is, is very inspiring. So I think... Finding the people and and really um, developing the people and helping and create that team environment and, and managing the team so that we we always we move towards our vision. That's as all is a challenge and it's an ongoing challenge because you know you can never get to a level where you're completely satisfied. There's always more that can be done. There's always more that you need to do. So that's a huge challenge. Second challenge, of course, was um, was finances. I, I kind of put a rule for myself. I don't know why I put this rule, but I put a rule for myself that I will not accept donations for the website. Oh, interesting. And that, in a way, just because I thought, I said to myself, it does not make sense. A productive Muslim should not be begging. You know, oh, a productive true. Muslim should be eating from its own sort of work, so to speak. So initially, I was very tough because I had to invest from my personal finances, personal savings. But eventually, alhamdulillah, slowly and surely now we're moving towards sort of selling online classes, selling online courses, and that has helped to to sort of finance the website. And now, just by closing that door, it's, it's funny, when you close the door of say, I'm not accepting donations, it actually opens up, you start to become really creative of how can you, you know, generate enough income to keep the, the website going, to keep the project going forward. But that's, that's an ongoing challenge as well. It's not something that's... Uh, very easy to solve this. There's ways we have to think of creative ways to make sure we create the value, valuable products and service that people would want to buy. You can't just sell them anything. You know, people are really have high, have high quality standards, so we're trying to achieve that. And the third, of course, is is um, is basically um, you know reaching out and and satisfying our, our 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 audience and making sure that they're happy, making sure that we're really you know, helping them become more productive. The challenge with productive Muslim is that you really can't measure your success unless, you know, we don't have a measure where someone walks into a website and it's totally a couch potato and then after, you know, six weeks he becomes, I don't know, a marathon runner. <laughs> transformation. You know, exactly. How do you measure that transformation? It's very personal. So we have to, sometimes have to listen to the feedback and have to make sure that we sort of, I call it scratch our own itch. So whenever we are face our own productive challenges, we think how can we package the content so that we scratch our own, you know, really um, address the issues that people are facing. So just being able to tap into and to listen. Now we have such a global audience, you know, who do you listen to, who do you not listen to? How do you take all those feedback? How do you make sure you reflect all that? Um, you know, we've, we've tried translation websites. We kind of have mixed, uh, you know, approaches. We have Arabic website, French website, Bosnian, Malaysian, but those that have become spin-off projects. So. It's, it's really just managing that and trying to serve the global ummah, you know, with, 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 with one type of content. It can be quite, quite challenging. 
Alhamdulillah. So it seems like um, the main three challenges that you faced was firstly finding the right people, um, secondly finances, and then your audiences. Um, were you making like du'a along the way? Like what kind of um, du'a were you making to kind of help you on your journey? I think the du'a is just to just help is ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us uh, sincere and keep us serving the Lord. And and use this for this for his sake. Always going to use for his sake. I'd probably make uh, you know it, it really becomes part and parcel of you and part of your identity, and it really is becomes. Um, but you always are conscious that this is not a right, but it's a privilege. Allah Taala has given us this privilege to serve Him, and that Allah Taala has put in the hearts of people to to follow the website and to like the website and to enjoy the content. But at the same time, it's not something that will last forever. So I was I'm always very very. Um, fearful of complacency oh, yes. and uh, fearful of one day saying, oh yeah, we've, we've done it, we're now the best you know, blog or whatever, you know, it's mm-hmm. just, if, it was, as soon as they hit that, I tell my team always, as soon as we hit that, that's our downfall. So just pushing that boundaries and making it like, oh, just, you know, make it, make it, make, help us continue and not be mm-hmm. sidetracked, especially now, all of us are getting older, getting busier, we have families, we have responsibilities. So it becomes more and more challenging. How do you really can make this project continue and not and outlast us? I mean, my ideal is that if I drop dead today, the, the project should continue, should not rely on me personally or on any team member. It should be something that's, that's self-sufficient. So building that is, is going to be uh, something that I always make that Allah helps us for, inshallah. I really like the point that you made that it um, involved in like the Dao, like making content for others. It's not our right, it's a privilege. And I think that's a really important point. Um, and, and you touched on the point where of complacency. How is it that you and your team manage like when things get too easy, when you guys are like, oh, we're doing quite well? How do you guys challenge yourselves to go forward and make even better products? I don't think we reached that point yet. Not yet. <laughs> in terms of you I think. A, we really have high aspirations and really big plans, and we know we haven't even scratched the surface yet. So, and Alhamdulillah, we've been blessed again by a team that, that really wants to push forward and to raise the bar higher and higher each 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 year. So we have that sort of that those team members who really are not satisfied very easily. Okay. And we are our worst, we are our own worst critic. We really criticize our work in Tony so much, and we don't, we try not to get too, um, too pampered by the by the feedback and people writing nice emails to us so we we just just keep questioning ourselves questioning the way we do things keep changing things try to adapt new things having i mean you should see our our online collaboration uh, platform just we just you know you can see all the debates happening about <laughs> how we should do this and you know how best to do it and really that sort of level of engagement that level level of um, of of debate that happen within the team is very very healthy. It keeps us moving forward. If if all the team members were like you know yes sir and yeah we'll just do what we have to do and that's it, then the website will be dead very very early on. But really having a team that debate and argue and and challenge and say why can we do this? Why can't we do that? Um, you know and how can we be better? That helps to to just fight that complacency at least for now, and I'm praying that we continue fighting that, inshallah. Mm-hmm. So, um, you're talking about how your team has quite high aspirations, and that we are our own worst critic. Um, so, on the outside, on the outside, it seems like success in like doing well in the in like the the blogger kind of making content field. It seems like it's quite easy and smooth, but on the inside, there's a lot of work that goes in. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of, lot of critiquing collaboration and um, a lot of supporting each other and questioning and challenging. Um, do you find that it's like quite an ongoing process, like this challenging? Yeah, I think, I think it's mainly setting up the right systems and processes because we're still, we're still sort of, um, some areas of our work, we're very streamlined. Like for example, the blog, the content, you know, publishing articles, we have a very streamlined process and sort of is very clear. Some areas we're still sort of getting the process right. For example, launching classes, launching courses. Uh, we want to sort of we want to relaunch um, different areas, products and services. So those are still we're still learning the ropes and still sort of changing the process and learning through. And through that change and growth, there is almost like a you know growth pain. So you know sometimes we get used to we barely get used to working a certain way. Now we have to change and it gets stressful and there's a lot that goes through and we have to you know it sometimes gets too expensive. We have to cut down and so all those daily decisions and daily uh, challenges and just but again it's, it's just blessing of having a team that's that really feels ownership of the vision this is not this is not my project this is not you know Muhammad Faris's idea this is really the whole team I mean 
um, everyone is, is is when you see the debates happening on our, on on inside the team, you you wouldn't know who is the CEO, who is the founder, because really everyone's really very passionate about what should happen, what shouldn't happen, how should these take things take place, and those sort of debates and, and and discussions really help us you know shape up the right processes, and then then you know once once the things are smooth, it, as again you're right, it appears to the world that things are going pretty smooth in the background, uh, but to get that stage, it took a lot of discussion discussions and, you know, and thinking and thought and planning and, you know, and uh, just research, making sure that we, we, we're following the right processes. Yeah, definitely. That's, it's interesting to know that there's all this like discussion going on in the background. It's really cool. What we really wanted to know was back when you started, did you feel nervous before you like hit the post button or like publish your first video or your first article? Like what was your thought process? What was your emotions like back then? I can't remember that long ago, <laughs> but probably probably would be was excited. I remember when I first published first few posts, I was getting excited, um, and then after a while, when I think I got bored, um, I realized it wasn't because the project was bad; it was just the intention behind it. So I just changed the intention from just you know taking whatever is out there and teaching Muslims about it, but to how does Islam help you become more productive? So just intentions changed, and that really propelled forward. And then is is the idea of um, I think that time was really the fear of 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 not of not really reaching that level of of professionalism, not really reaching a level of high quality. I think that was probably my you know my worst uh, nightmare. Like you know things just don't go perfectly well into how well should how things should go. So that was what probably kept me nervous I uh, wasn't really worried about the numbers about the stacks about the you know how many fans were it didn't it didn't it was for me it wasn't that exciting what was more interesting for me was you know are, are we producing the real good quality content unique content and not just the generic content that you can find any blog um, that that kind of that kind of kept me sort of um, going what would you say to someone who thinks that, um, you know, co- doing their own projects and conquering, um, you know, producing con- content, what what would, you, what would you say to them if they thought that it doesn't involve fear? Like, is fear for part of the, the process? I think you got to be excitedly nervous about what you're doing. Uh, mm. Whenever we launch a new class, whenever I do public speaking and I do, um, you know, give public lectures, I mean, no matter how many times I do it, I mean, how many times I launch, no matter how many times I do webcast and 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 uh, you know online classes, I still if you have this sort of nervous excitement behind it, I think that's healthy. That 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 shows your life. That shows that you're really passionate about what you're doing. If you didn't feel anything, if you didn't just didn't care, then really you're in the wrong wrong project. Mm-hmm. So I think my advice is is you know have that have that as a healthy dose of nervous excitement that really uh, but shouldn't stop you. It shouldn't be um, you know, help you from moving forward or from taking action. It really should be something that 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 propels you. That say, actually, sometimes whenever I feel excitedly nervous about something, that means it's it's something I should be pursuing. It's almost like a, a compass for me that this is an area of growth for you. This is something new you should pursue. If I, if it's too if it looks sounds too easy to me, oh yeah, I could do that. Then then I'm not then it's something I'm not excited about. But if, I, if I'm nervous excited, that means this is something I should pursue. It's like a compass. Oh, interesting. So have that kind of like compass. That's really interesting. So, um, Brother Muhammad, before we end off, could you give us some uh, final tips for our listeners who are maybe hoping to start their own project? What advice would you give them? So the first thing is, is again, make it very clear. Um, don't wait for a big vision to hit you. Um, start anyway. So if it's a blog, start a blog. If it's a company, start a company. If it's a you know, small business, whatever it is, just start anyway. Don't wait for, some people wait for like everything to fall in place and, and the logo is designed and, and the website is booked and everything. Just, just don't worry about that. Just start anyway. And secondly, focus on the quality of your product, your service, your blog. Focus on that. That's that's the most, that's the thing that keeps you going. Everything else is just, you know, sort of uh, distracting. Um, and yes, focus on the quality of the product and services or the content that you and I produce. Third is is find the right people and spend a lot of time finding the right people. I mean, we do we do heavy interviews of our of our actually volunteers. We ask them to send them CVs. We we interview them. We give them one month probation, even though they're volunteers. It's unpaid work, but we really are very choosy and selective who gets on the team because we want to make sure that we have the team members who will be the most you know committed and the one who will, who will be 
who buys the division. So be very selective of team members who you have on board. And fourth is 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 just keep going. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be uh, annoying. It's going to be some days you'll have to, you know, sacrifice time. Sometimes sacrifice finances. Sometimes you have to sacrifice sleep. You know, but <laughs> you just have to keep going. Just keep going. Do not ever give up day in day out. You know, Productive Muslim is not an overnight success. It took five years for us to get to where we are now, and I pray that we don't stop here. So it's it's really it's just that 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 every day, every day. Bit by bit, you're putting something into the project. Every day, there's one blog or one email or one phone call or one something. Every single day, you're putting something towards it. And fifth, and of course, most important is dua, 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 and ask Allah to keep, to bless you and to keep you going for this and not and not to stop it for you. I think this these you know that I would just that is the the secret for any 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 um, person who really wants to pursue a productive project. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic tips. So firstly, start anywhere, focus on quality, find the right people and keep going and just make a lot of du'a. So um, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. But before we end off, um, Brother Muhammad, where can our listeners find you and your content? Sure. So just log on to productivemus.com. That's uh, P-R-O-D-U-C-T-I-V-E Muslim, M-U-S-L-I-M dot com. And you'll find all, all our blogs, articles, interviews, doodles, animations. And inshallah, we're hoping to launch a, a new version of our website before the end of this month. So hopefully uh, you, you'll find some uh, some new areas. to new. We have the Product Muslim Academy launching, which will have all, all online classes. And just keep visiting us for, for more for if you any productivity need, we want, want to be your number one platform if you're facing a productivity challenge, whether it's in your spiritual life, whether in your physical life, whether in your social life, whether in your work life, home life, family life. We want you. To, we want us to be the, your reference for it. So please feel free anytime to visit us, and we look forward to to helping you, inshallah. Fantastic. So um, guys, please head over to ProductiveMuslim.com where you can find some amazing content that can really benefit you in, in any area of your life. So again, thank you so much, Brother Mohammed Faris, for, for joining us. So that was the interview with Mohammed Faris. Inshallah, you enjoyed it and garnered a few gems to help you with your own productive journey. You can connect with Mohammed and Productive Muslim over at ProductiveMuslim.com. And also remember to sign up for their Productive Tips newsletter. For more on this interview and other episodes, you can head over to our website to get more on that. Friends, that's all for today. Thanks for joining us. And thanks again to our sponsors for today's episode, Visionaire Online. Be sure to check out Visionaire by going to muslimlifehackers.com forward slash visionaire. That's V-I-S-I-O-N-A-I-R-E. And remember, by supporting Visionaire, you're supporting the show as well. So until next time, guys, aim high, take action, and be awesome.